Good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming to tonight's virtual public information meeting for the Russell Road Intersections Project. My name is Jennifer Galumba from Trans Systems, and I will serve as our moderator for tonight's presentation. Hi, I'm Matt Smith from Trans Systems, and I'm serving as a project manager for this project. With me today is Alyssa Kidd from Trans Systems, Kevin Carrier from the Lake County Division of Transportation, Mike Lukic, also from Lake County Division of Transportation, and Kevin Kenneth from Bollinger Lock and Associates. We represent the project team and we will be available for questions at the end of the presentation. This slide is an overview of our agenda for the meeting tonight. We will discuss each of the three intersection projects separately, going from west to east along Russell Road. We'll also discuss the segment between Kenosha Road and Lewis Avenue. And we'll close with an overview of the land acquisition process and the project schedule before we get to our Q&A session at the end of the presentation. At any time during the presentation tonight, you may submit a question using the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen. Your questions will be summarized and grouped together with others and will be answered at the end of the presentation. And you can also wait until after the presentation and ask your questions of that at that time. So let's get started. This slide shows the project area. North is pointing up and you can see the state line separating Wisconsin and Illinois in red across the middle of the screen. Our project is studying three intersections with Russell Road, Kilbourne Road, Kenosha Road, and Lewis Avenue. These are all identified in the yellow squares that you see on the screen. Kilbourne Road is about 1.8 miles from I-94, and the Kenosha Road intersection is separated by about two and a half miles from Kilbourne. The Kenosha Road and Lewis Avenue intersections are separated by just a half a mile, and Lewis, between Lewis Avenue and Sheridan Road is about a mile and a half. The intersection of Russell Road at Kilbourne Road is the first of the three intersections studied during this project. This intersection is located in Russell, Illinois, and is contained entirely within the Illinois state limits. The intersection has operational inefficiencies in its current configuration. There is heavy interstate truck traffic and the small existing corner radii make it difficult for trucks to turn without off tracking onto the gravel shoulders. Turning trucks at this intersection, especially those making a right turn, often cannot complete a turning maneuver without encroaching on the opposing traffic lanes. As a result, these trucks have to wait in queues for opposing lanes to clear before performing this turn. Vehicles in opposing lanes sometimes need to reverse back from the stop bar to clear their lanes for the encroaching trucks. Due to the small tolerances for this maneuver, turning trucks are also slow to clear the intersection. This intersection is also unique from the other two intersections in this project due to the close proximity of homes and driveways. Minimizing impacts to the properties at this intersection is an important project need. Crash data for the project was analyzed for each intersection over a period of six years from 2013 to 2018. The crash data was obtained from the Lake County Division of Transportation, Lake County Sheriff's Department, Kenosha County and Pleasant Prairie. A total of 65 crashes occurred in the project study area during the six year review period with 13 of this cra these crashes being at the Kilburn Road intersection. Of these 13 crashes, there were no injuries or fatalities documented during the study period. The majority of the crashes at this intersection were angle collisions, all of which involved an eastbound vehicle and a southbound vehicle. Failure to properly reduce speed and yield right away were the most common causes in all eight of the angle crashes. Overall, there are a low number of crashes documented and no significant crash problems appear to be present. However, due to the nature of the intersection and the heavy amount of truck traffic present, this crash data may not fully represent the current conditions as many near miss crashes between turning trucks and vehicles have been observed and reported. The last public meeting um, was held on December 4th, 2019. At this meeting, a formal comment area was provided where written comments could be um, made on comment forms. After the meeting, comments were also received through both mail and email for a span of two weeks. In total, there were 171 people who attended the last public meeting and 34 total comments that were received. The comments received for all the intersections generally supported improvements. 
The table presented on this slide is a summary of the comments received for the intersection of Russell Road at Kilburn Road. 17 total comments were received, with the biggest takeaway being that changes were supported. Many comments relating to this intersection also expressed concerns regarding the truck traffic. Comments from the last public meeting were dom documented in the project report and were used in selection of the preferred alternatives. Two potential alternatives were evaluated for the Russell Road at Kilburn Road intersection. These alternatives included an enhanced always stop and a roundabout. A traffic signal alternative was not studied at this intersection because the intersection did not meet signal warrants. The different alternatives for each intersection were evaluated according to a set of criteria, which included safety benefits, traffic benefits, impacts to adjacent properties, impacts to environmental resources and cost. Public input received from the initial public meeting was also taken into consideration in selection and refinement of the alternatives. The alternative that best meets the project needs for each intersection was selected by Lake County as the preferred alternative. An enhanced always stop was selected as the preferred improvement for the intersection of Russell Road at Kilburn Road. This alternative is presented on this slide. In this exhibit, Russell Road, which runs east and west, is oriented left and right across the screen. In Kilburn Road, which runs north and south, is oriented up and down with north to the top. The improvements for this intersection will include redesigned corner radii um, to better accommodate vehicular turning movements, especially that of trucks. A four foot rumble strip median will also be provided along all approaches to better guide traffic through the intersection. The improvements will require property acquisition along all four corners of the intersection. An always stop was selected at this intersection instead of a roundabout because operational inefficiencies were identified as the primary need since there was not found to be significant crash history and traffic volumes were manageable. An enhanced always stop will improve the operational inefficiencies while also minimizing impacts to the adjacent property and environmental resources. The intersection of Russell Road at Kenosha Road, 47th Avenue, is located in unincorporated Lake County to the south and Pleasant Prairie, Wisconsin to the north. At this location, the state line runs down the middle of Russell Road. Existing issues include a high number of crashes and injuries. At the start of the project, the intersection was two-way stop controlled along Kenosha Road, 47th Avenue, but was converted to an always stop in April of 2020 as an interim safety improvement before long-term improvements could be made. Additional existing issues include an adequate sight distance on the southbound approach to Russell Road along Kenosha Road due to a low vertical profile and a vertical crest curve along Russell Road on its approach to Kenosha Road. The inadequate sight distance makes it hard for southbound vehicles along Kenosha Road, 47th Avenue, to see approaching westbound vehicles along Russell Road before reaching the intersection. The site distance issues paired with high operating speeds on Russell Road have been the cause of numerous injury related crashes at this intersection. At the Russell Road and Kenosha Road 47th Avenue intersection, there were a total of 26 crashes during the six year study period. Of these 26 crashes, 18 of these were injury crashes with four of those crashes considered a type A incapacitating injury. Type A injury crashes are classified as severe injuries that prevent a person from performing normal activity. There were no documented fatalities during the six year study period, but a fatal crash did occur at this intersection in September of 2019. Since this crash falls outside of the crash analysis period, it is not included in the chart on the screen, but it has been noted in the project report and was considered when forming the alternatives recommendation. Overall, Angle crashes accounted for the majority of the crashes at this intersection. All of them caused by a northbound and southbound vehicle failing to yield right away to Russell Road traffic. The angle crashes accounted for most of the injury cr crashes. At the time of the crash analysis, this intersection was under two-way stop control along Kenosha Road. 
The intersection was subsequently changed to an always stop control in April of 2020. The high travel speeds and limited intersection site distances are probable causes for the high proportion of injury crashes at this intersection. So at the last public meeting, there was general support for changes to be made at this intersection. Of the support, the roundabout was the preferred alternative identified, followed by an enhanced always stop. Other concerns expressed at the last public meeting were related to the existing two-way stop conditions, which the intersection has since been converted to an always stop. Additional concerns were expressed over the high traffic speeds along Russell Road at this location. The speed limit was lowered east of Kenosha Road, 47th Avenue, along Russell Road in October of 2020, from 55 miles an hour to 45 miles an hour. Two potential alternatives were evaluated for the intersection of Russell Road at Kenosha Road. These alternatives included an enhanced always stop and a roundabout. A traffic signal was not investigated at this intersection because the intersection does not meet signal warrants. The preferred improvement for this intersection is a roundabout, which is shown on this screen. In this exhibit, Russell Road, which, which runs east and west, is oriented left and right across the screen. And Kenosha Road, which runs north and south, is oriented up and down across the screen with north to the top. The preferred improvement includes a 160 foot single lane roundabout centered on the existing intersection. An eight foot multi-use path will be provided along each corner of the intersection to easily allow on-street non-motorized users to traverse the roundabout. There. In order to satisfy this intersection's detention requirements, a detention pond will be provided in the southeast quadrant of the intersection. Improvements will require that right-of-way acquisition will be needed at all four corners of the intersection, and a permanent easement will also be needed along the southeast side of Kenosha Road in order to accommodate the proposed drainage design. A roundabout was selected as the preferred alternative because it best addresses the operational and safety issues present at the intersection while still minimizing the right-of-way acquisition and cost. Next up is the intersection of Russell Road at Lewis Avenue, 39th, 39th Avenue. This is located in unincorporated Lake County to the south and Pleasant Prairie, Wisconsin to the north. At this location, the state line run down, runs down the middle of Russell Road. This intersection has safety and operational inefficiencies in its current configuration. The approaches to this intersection have open roadway conditions with high operating speeds and long distances uh, to the next adjacent controlled intersection. A long decline on the eastbound approach of the intersection also encourages higher speeds than the rest of the Russell Road corridor, leading to safety issues. Operational issues are experienced in the AM and PM peaks with backups caused by the existing always stop control. And there are, uh, are also no existing left turn lanes present at the intersection. So looking at the crashes, there were a total of 26 crashes during the six year study period. And of those 26 crashes, five of these were injury crashes. And one of those was considered a type A incapacitating injury. There were no documented fatalities during the six year study period. This intersection had a wider array of accident types when compared to the other two intersections, although angle crashes were still in the majority. Most of these crashes were caused by a failure to properly yield the right of way at the four-way stop. Crashes are also likely due to the open roadway conditions on all four approaches of this intersection. There are no signals or stop signs for at least a mile on any of the approaches at the time of our analysis. The approaches to this intersection also lack any advance warning signs. Four of the five injury crashes involved an eastbound and northbound vehicle and half of the crashes occurred under low light conditions. At the last public meeting, there was general support for changes to be made at this intersection. And of the support, the roundabout was the preferred alternative identified, followed by an enhanced always stop. Additional current concerns were expressed over the high traffic speeds along Russell Road at this location. 
And like Alyssa just said, the speed limit was lowered east of Kenosha Road, 47th Avenue, along Russell in October of 2020 from 55 to 45 miles an hour based on a speed study that was completed to address those concerns. Three potential alternatives were evaluated for the Russell and Lewis Avenue, 39th Avenue intersection. These alternatives included an enhanced hallway stop, a traffic signal, and a roundabout. The preferred improvement for this intersection is a roundabout. This alternative is presented on the slide. In this exhibit, Russell Road, which runs east and west, is oriented left and right across the screen. And Lewis Avenue, 39th Avenue, uh, running north-south, is oriented up and down, with north pointing up. The preferred improvement here includes a 160-foot single-lane roundabout centered on the existing intersection. An eight-foot multi-use path will be provided along each corner to allow on-street, non-motorized roadway users to easily traverse the roundabout off-street. In order to satisfy the intersection's detention requirements, a detention pond will be provided in the southwest quadrant of the intersection. The improvements will require that property acquisition will be needed from all four corners of the intersection. The roundabout was selected as a preferred alternative because it best addresses the operational and safety issues present at this intersection while still minimizing right-of-way acquisition and costs. Uh, the preferred improvement along the stretch of Russell Road between Kenosha Road and Lewis Avenue, 47th Avenue and 39th Avenue, is, uh, is a resurfacing cross-section. The section of roadway will consist of 12-foot wide paved travel lane, a 4-foot wide bike-friendly paved shoulders, and 4-foot wide aggregate shoulders. The driveways in this section of roadway will be resurfaced and any existing driveway culverts will be replaced. Driveway access will be maintained at all times during construction and no property acquisition will be needed for these improvements. Widening to a three lane roadway for this stretch of Russell Road was evaluated as a potential alternative that would have included one travel lane in each direction with a two way left turn lane in the middle to provide a refuge area for turning cars onto and out of residential driveways. But that alternative was not selected as preferred because it was found to be unwarranted based on the low uh, driveway density and um, the roadway speeds. So property acquisition is required from all three of the intersections. And there are three types of land acquisition. These include right-of-way, which is sometimes referred to as fee simple, permanent easement, and a temporary easement. Fee simple is a full acquisition of a portion of a property where ownership, including all rights and interests, will be transferred to the local jurisdictional agency. A permanent easement is acquisition where property ownership is retained by the current property owner, but the agency is allowed to use a portion of that property in perpetuity. A temporary easement is acquisition where property ownership is retained by the current property owner, but the agency is allowed to use a portion of the property during the construction process. The land acquisition process will begin during phase two, which is anticipated to begin in the summer of 2022 and will consist of a series of steps. The first step will be to determine ownership of each parcel by preparing property descriptions and conducting a survey. The second step will be an independent appraisal, at which time the property owners will be invited to accompany the appraiser during a property, during a property inspection. The appraiser will walk the property, but will not need access to any homes or buildings. In the final step of this process, the property owner will be provided a written offer of just compensation and a summary of the property to be acquired. Well, this slide shows our project schedule. We're near the end of our phase one process or our preliminary engineering and environmental studies here at the tail end of 2021. All of our comments and questions from today's presentation will be included in the final project report. Lake County Division of Transportation plans to begin the preparation of contract plans and the land acquisition process in 2022. It is expected that construction could begin as early as 2024, depending on project readiness and funding availability. 
That concludes our uh, presentation and we want to thank everyone for their participation in our event tonight. Uh, now we will begin the question and answer session of the meeting. Please use this time to type in your questions uh, using the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. We are, have received a number of questions and we will begin answering the questions in, in just a minute. Um, all questions may not be answered due to meeting time constraints, but any unanswered questions um, will be posted or answered uh, on the project website within a few days after the meeting. We are going to uh, start off uh, with a question about the Kilbourne intersection and um, just the question is, why have you decided against a roundabout at the Kilbourne intersection? So, Matt? <laughs> All right, thanks. Uh, so with the Kilbourne intersection, the needs that we identified uh, during our project was to be able to accommodate the, all vehicles safely. Um, we, have, we saw during our existing reviews of the area that there are a lot of near misses between um, cars and trucks as they're trying to make turns to that intersection. And there is, um, there was a uh, part of our evaluation then was to try to figure out which type of alternative would best meet those needs. And when we looked at a roundabout, um, you know, that is a very large intersection with a very large footprint. And we developed some concepts of that and it would really affect a lot of the neighboring properties. We'd be very close to the homes, might even require some acquisition of homes. And the needs, the again, the needs there could, uh, we felt like the intersection needs could be addressed by simply moving forward with the enhanced intersection instead of the roundabout. And another concern with the roundabout is just would really change the character of the area and felt like um, it, would, it would be more costly as well. So just trying to address those main needs of, a com of allowing vehicles to get through the intersection safely, both cars and trucks, we felt like the enhanced intersection was the best alternative for this intersection. Thanks, Matt. Okay, uh, we have a couple of questions with regards to roundabouts in general, um, and just the uh, getting information out there about uh, using roundabouts. Obviously, there's uh, the county has quite a few now, um, and I believe the county does have a video on their website um, that talks about um, the usage. We had a question come in about using turn signals uh, within a roundabout. You were aware of that, that video, I believe it's on the county's website. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I've looked at that a few times. So there's some good um, information there about how roundabouts work and how drivers should, should behave in those roundabouts. I know in this area here near Russell Road, there are, there's a new roundabout at Wadsworth and Dillies and then a few roundabouts on the Wisconsin side too. So they are becoming more prevalent and, and something that uh, I think drivers are beginning to get more comfortable with as you see more of them. Uh, I, I would want to add that you know, the biggest benefits of roundabouts is, is how they compare compared to a traditional stop sign or a signal intersection. And we've seen studies from Federal Highway Administration and the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety or reduces crashes significantly, so, uh, up to 75% reduction in crashes. So that's what makes these roundabouts really uh, effective is their ability to reduce crashes. Uh, because you, when you enter a roundabout, the, really the only way you can go is to, uh, your speed is controlled by uh, the curved uh, roadway as you enter into the roundabout. And then you can only go in the one direction uh, so it, it reduces all those conflict points that you have in a normal intersection and it just gets it down to just just a single point with a right turn versus uh, someone in the roundabout. Okay, thank you. Okay, the next question. Um, does your study considered uh, increased truck traffic in the future? Um, they're concerned about the trend in tra truck traffic. Um, with the proposed alternatives? Yeah, I could speak to that a little bit here. So, you know, I think what well, we all know that truck volumes at the Russell Road and Kilboard Road intersection are, are quite high. You know, we, we counted all three intersections and the Kenosha and Lewis intersections are 
pretty typical of most Lake County based intersections with truck percentages in a normal or a, an average uh, percent. But at Kilburn Road, there is a lot more trucks. Um, and it's a challenge here for, for Lake County DOT to safely accommodate everybody. You know, the, the routes, uh, the Lake County road system is meant to, you know, move goods, services, and people. That includes cars, trucks, bicyclists, and pedestrians where applicable. So trucks are allowed to use all of the county highway network, but we do need to be concerned with trucks when they're overweight or over lengths, or if trucks are exceeding the speed limit. You know, and these are all issues that we can we can address and should be addressing through some enforcement. But the goal of our project was really to find an alternative that addresses the safety needs you know, at the intersection, try to allow cars and, and trucks to move safely. You know, we, we have seen, we have videos where we saw trucks, you know, uh, an occasion where cars would have to back up or pull off into the shoulder just so a truck could make a turn. And with the, the recommended alternative, we feel like um, there's a way to make sure those turning movements can happen safely. I, um, will truck traffic increase? You know, I, I think, you know, with the current uh, COVID situation that's been going on for the last year and a half, I think it's pretty obvious uh, we're all uh, getting stuff from Amazon and things like that. The truck traffic is something that's increasing. And you can look across the state line to all the different industrial parks that are there. Uh, but it's our it's our goal and our our mission to try to make sure that all the vehicles can move through the intersection safely. Thank you. Uh, there's a question with regards to which intersection will be done first. Um, yeah, um, so something we're probably still going to iron out all the details on that. But sitting here today, uh, I think the idea is that the Kilbourne Road intersection would be done independently from the other two, since they're so far away, about two and a half miles away. So the Kilbourne Road uh, intersection would probably or could begin in, in 2024. The other two intersections with uh, Lewis and Kenosha, we're still evaluating uh, the best way to complete those projects. You know, the uh, Lake County has seen that roundabouts could be completed in about 90 calendar days. So to try to achieve both of those in one year would be a very, would be an aggressive schedule. It's possible, but there would be possibly some advantages to that. And, and there also may be some advantages to do one, one year, and then the second one, the following year. So we're still evaluating that. Um, but like we said in the presentation, we didn't feel like any, anything would really be starting up here until any sooner than 2024. Thank you. Um, there's a couple of questions about uh, accidents and uh, including the uh, fatality that had happened, uh, I believe after the, the noted study period. Um, and if the, those accidents would be considered before finalizing the improvement plan. Yeah, that, and it definitely was. I know we included a discussion about in the, that in the slide. You know that 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 fatal crash happened really just as our project was getting started, and you know what we find when we're doing these projects is that the, the amount of time it takes the agencies to pull all the crash data together, we're always kind of looking a couple of years behind. Um, so you, you may have heard in our presentation that our the six year period that we looked at was 2013 through 2018, but because of that crash that occurred in 2019, it's something that we we certainly are aware of and something we evaluated. Uh, you know, when we had our public meeting in December of 2019, um, that intersection was at that time just a, a two-way stop. And so Lake County did move forward uh, in the springtime of 2020 to convert that intersection to an all-way stop and also evaluated the speeds along there to lower the speed limit to try to immediately, and at least on a short-term basis or a temporary basis, address the safety problems there. And really the moving forward in the future here with the roundabout is really gonna help improve safety even further. Next question is with regards to uh, bike accommodations. And um, I know it was discussed that the, uh, there'll be bike accommodate or shared use path at each of the two intersections um, at the corners. Uh, could you speak to the, the portion between those intersections and if bike accommodations will be there? Yeah, definitely. So you know, the goal of our, our, our three projects here was to look at the safety and operational needs at the intersections. Uh, however, future bike paths along Russell Road 
uh, is included or identified on Lake County's 2040 non-motorized plan. And what we've tried to do with our intersections is make sure that we can accommodate that in the future. Like we discussed at the roundabout that we do include eight foot uh, shared use path around the roundabout. Uh, the resurfacing along Russell between Kenosha and Lewis will also include bike friendly shoulders. So we're, we're trying to plan for the future, but it would really be a, a, a project down the road here that would really look at accommodating bikes throughout all of Russell Road. Next question with regards to uh, speed. So like, what will or can be done to decrease the speed coming out of the Russell Road and Lewis intersection? Uh, well, we did make that, the county did make that change to uh, at least the section of Russell between Kenosha and Lewis, uh, like I just mentioned back in um, spring of 2020. Um, if that's the area in question, then, then that, that, that has changed. But, but moving forward, uh, there's still challenges there, or concerns about excessive vehicle speeds. I think that's something that um, is good to hear from folks and something that I, um, I, that I think Lake County is willing to continue to evaluate to make sure that the speeds along that corridor are set appropriately. You know, enforcement is always a challenge uh, at any location. And you can request some additional enforcement uh, and, you, and you may see a short-term benefit to that, but unless it's something that's looked at every day, uh, sometimes those short-term benefits are short-term. So, uh, but it, it's something that, that I, uh, I guess I'll speak for Lake County, it's something that, that the county is going to continue to evaluate and try to make sure that those, those things are looked at. Yeah, Matt and Jen, I can jump in too. And uh, my name is Kevin Carrier with Lake County Division of Transportation. So um, regarding the speed, yeah, Matt's 100% Matt's correct. We went out there, we have to follow um, federal requirements to set the speed limit. <clears throat> so it's a pretty rigorous process um, and pretty well-defined process um, that uh, for setting the speed limit out there. So we can't go out there and adjust it um, just on raising it or lowering it uh, as, as we see fit. We actually have to follow um, the federal guidance. So the first step in that is uh, finding the average running speed out there and then making adjustments based on the character of the road. So the, the adjacent driveways, adjacent development, um, pedestrian activity, things like that. So we were able to adjust the speeds with the four-way stop going in. We think that after the improvement with the roundabouts, that could help, um, you know, maybe lower some of the speeds out there, just people navigating the roundabouts and then, you know, having to go through a second roundabout. So we'll evaluate the speed again um, and do a speed study after the improvement to see if it warrants adjusting the speed limits further. So definitely aware of the, you know, residents' concerns out there and something like Matt mentioned, we'll continue to monitor and um, you know, if we're allowed to by the federal requirements, um, you know, we'll adjust the speed limits accordingly. Thanks, Kevin. I agree with the, the roundabouts. Uh, slowing down for the roundabouts definitely can help with that. A question about, uh, will the intersections be open to traffic during construction? So I, I, I do think, Matt, you touched on that in an earlier question here, just to reiterate um, that the plan for that? Sure. So the, the Kilbourne intersection, since we're just recommending the enhanced intersection, so no, no changes to a roundabout, so the construction of that intersection will be a little simpler. However, since trucks have difficulty making those turns today, they will not be able to make any turns to that intersection while we're doing the construction there. So the, the construction of that intersection would be staged, so it would be kind of working on one side or the other, and then providing a detour route um, for truck traffic. But any trucks that are going through that intersection there would only be allowed to go straight. They won't be allowed to turn. They just physically won't be able to do it. So um, that's the approach for that. For Kenosha and for Lewis, you know, the best way to construct the roundabouts is to fully close the intersection for that 90-day period that I noted. So um, that that's the plan. That's that's what was done at Wadsworth and Dilly's uh, um, last. I think that was earlier this year or uh, last year. So that would be the approach. And like I mentioned before, we'll still, we'll still be evaluating whether we think we can do both of those within one calendar year, one construction season, or if we'll be better off doing one in one season and then coming back the second year for the other. If we end up going to that uh, across two, two uh, construction seasons, at the end of the first season, you know, everything would be restored in a condition where it'd be safe for everybody to operate through there and for snow removal 
and all that. So it wouldn't be a, I wouldn't classify it as a construction zone over that winter period. Um, it would kind of be just kind of two back-to-back -back construction seasons. Yeah. A question about the detention ponds, basins that were mentioned. Uh, how will they be designed and then also managed? All right, so Kevin so, Kennan. Uh, yeah. There he is, all right. I, this is Kevin Kenneth with uh, VLA. Uh, we uh, are the drainage engineers for this uh, for this project. Um, the design of the detention ponds is uh, per the uh, Lake County Watershed Development Ordinance. Some pretty rigorous requirements in there, which we are following. Um, they will be uh, located right now. They're proposed to be located entirely within right away, so they would be maintained by Lake County DOT. And as for just the general design requirements, right now those ponds are designed to provide detention, but they are uh, designed to be dry. So they will fill up with uh, with with stormwater and runoff when uh, a, a rainfall is experienced. But they will um, they will slowly release that water and, and ultimately be dry uh, uh, for the majority of the time. There is also a small portion of the pond uh, dedicated to uh, water quality provisions. So there will be uh, roughly a foot of, of water in the, in the bottom of the pond that will uh, infiltrate into the ground and, and promote uh, groundwater recharge and, and water quality. And um, that's generally the, uh, the design requirements of the detention ponds. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, okay, thanks for bearing with us during these questions. Uh, I and we're trying to get through them, so I, I appreciate your uh, patience. Um, I have a question here about the, um, during the 2019 meeting, um, the roundabout at Lewis and Russell um, was discussed and, and thought that it may not be considered due to the elevation issues at the intersection. Um, what has, has changed with regards to that? Uh... I guess I would start off with saying when we had our meeting back in December, we were really just getting into some of the details. So uh, obviously what we've been working on since that time is looking at those details. So there is some, you know, a, a vertical curve on that south leg of Lewis that um, I would, it, it's, it's, it's there and it's, it's a challenge to, uh, as opposed to other parts of the corridor where everything, everything is very flat. Uh, but, you know, the footprint of the roundabout is, is relatively compact. Um, we talked about 160 foot radius for that roundabout. So uh, the the lengths, when you kind of look at it in the, in the four directions, it's it's pretty close to the intersection. So the most of that vertical curve on the south leg to Lewis, you know, is quite a bit south of the intersection. So what we found when we got into the details is that that there is uh, you know a safe way to position that roundabout there, that um, that that worked better than maybe we initially thought. Um, so that, I think that was a concern of ours when we got started, just looking at the topography in that area. But once we got into the details, we found that we were able to make it, make it fit. At least at a preliminary level, I should add. Um, when we get into the, the detailed design in the phase two process, we'll be looking at that much more critically. But uh, based on our preliminary look, it looks like things should fit. There's a couple of questions about um, that the the, four-way stop has been put in at Kenosha and Russell. And so uh, just curious why um, we're still proceeding with the uh, roundabout improvements. Can you um, speak to that? Yeah, definitely. So, you know, we, we mentioned that the, that when we, when the Lake County instituted and changed it to the four-way stop, it was uh, a short-term quick change something to address the, that that fatal crash and make sure we're making that operation work as safe as we can um, but we we do feel like the roundabout is going to improve that safety even further you know the, the discussion we had about the lewis avenue intersection which is a four-way stop still had more crashes than any of the other intersections uh, when you look at roundabouts and those reductions and crashes of up to 75 percent it, it the the safety benefits of that roundabout just take it to a whole nother level so um, that's, that's the goal here for Lake County is to provide that alternative that best meets the needs there. And we wanna, we're gonna be looking at the roundabout there just to make sure we're making it as safe as possible. 
There was a question about the, what are the enhancements for the intersection of Russell and Kilbourne? Um, I don't know if we wanted to go. maybe they may have missed the beginning part of the meeting. So um, Alyssa, if you're able to go back to that slide to show the um, corner radii improvements and the um, pay, or, uh, raised median. We use the term enhanced just to describe that it's something different than what it is today, hopefully something better. Uh, sometimes people use that word enhancements to think maybe something more environmentally friendly or environmental component here, but uh, we're using that term just to indicate that we're trying to make the, the intersection better than what it is today. So those features that are shown there on the screen is the larger corner radii on all four sides there, and then uh, full width shoulders, and then also the rumble strip median in the middle. Alyssa, can you move to that next slide that shows that, that detail? Yeah, so that's that slightly raised uh, with the corrugations in it across the top. So if a car or a truck hits that, you're gonna feel it and it's really gonna encourage, hopefully that's the goal is encourage cars or trucks to not drive over that and stay on their side of the double yellow line. Question came in with regards to crashes. Um, and I don't know if we have, uh, with, whoop. what is considered a, a reasonable range of crashes per intersection per year? And then, you know, where do the, these intersections fall relative to that? Okay. Um, I don't know if I can say there's a reasonable amount of crashes. You know, I, there's a campaign for that Illinois Department of Transportation has about zero fatalities. I and mean, that's certainly the goal of, of us as traffic engineers, as transportation uh, roadway engineers, is to try to provide the most safe roadways and intersections or interchanges that we can. Um, I, I can add that these intersections, uh, and you heard the stats about the different numbers at, at each one, there's certainly intersections that have more crashes than, than these, but uh, what I think makes these three unique is that in comparison to other intersections around Lake County, the, the traffic volumes here are not as congested as what you might see farther south in the county, but there's still a you know pretty decent amount of crashes. And at Kilbourne specifically, a lot of near misses and a lot of uh, situations where driver behavior has created a way for people to, to make it safe because people have experienced this where you got trucks kind of coming across the double yellow line and you got to move out of the way. So while the, while the number of crashes are, are, are certainly a, 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 a number to try to strive for, but really what we're trying to do is try to really address that and, and make it safer. Uh, independent of the number, you know, it's not like if there was only five crashes, would we say, oh, it's fine. Sometimes it's not always the number of the crashes. It's, it's the, it's the near misses and it's the other experiences that we know by talking with people. Like we heard when we had our first public meeting, um, you know, that there are concerns out here that need to be addressed, no matter how many, whatever the number of crashes are. A couple of questions about detours for the, um, for the construction of the roundabouts uh, and they were asking about a specific route but I think you know it's safe to say that the the final route will is going to be continued to be coordinated um, with the county and not only the county but also with Kenosha County and uh, Pleasant Prairie yeah, definitely. So we've we've looked at that just at a very preliminary level here during our, our phase one study. Uh, we'll be also be coordinating with Illinois Department of Transportation about any projects might be going on in Green Bay Road or on Sheridan Road. And then also with Wisconsin agencies, like you mentioned there, Jen, Wisconsin DOT and Kenosha County and Pleasant Prairie. So uh, I, we can't report out today on what the detour routes are going to be. Uh, that's something we're going to be looking at when we get into the detailed design. But we, we know we need to coordinate with these other agencies and make, make sure we're not all detouring different different projects all the same route because that's not going to work for people. So that's something we will be coordinating uh, once we get into the next phase of the project in, uh, in next year. And I can just add to that too. Again, it's Kevin with Lake County DOT. Um, one other thing that we're required to do with the detour routes is that uh, we have to detour the traffic from our county routes onto um, other county or state highways. 
so we can't do detours onto other local roads just given the the type and the the amount of traffic that we have so we will post a detour um you know once it's kind of determined like matt said and, and coordinated with these other agencies and other projects in the area we'll post a, a detour that's that's following the appropriate uh level of route um though there may you know locals in the area may know of other you know shortcuts or things like that or different ways to kind of get around but our posted detour route will will adhere to uh to county and, and state highways so yeah thank you kevin so yeah really good questions uh coming in and really appreciate everybody's input. Some uh, agreement with the in, uh, improvements that are being proposed. Uh, noting just as recent as today that people are seeing, seeing the trucks backing up. So um, definitely the radii improvements at Kilbourne are uh, valuable. Question just came in with regards to the projects uh, and the, when they're going to start. Uh, so, Alyssa, would you mind pulling up that, that uh, project schedule slide? Yeah, we're thinking that the construction would begin in uh, as early as 2024, depending on what we're calling project readiness and availability, availability of funding. So we need that time period between 2022 and 2023 to complete our design, go through the land acquisition process. Um, these things uh, move at a pace that they, they need, they need a, a fair amount of time to get through. So sitting here today, we're, we're thinking that construction would begin no sooner than 2024. There was a question with regards to the shoulders on Russell um, and asking about if they would be continued going east, carry on to the railroad tracks as part of this project. Um, yeah, so our project, just like we were saying with the bike accommodations, we're just looking at the intersections. Um, yeah, I think the other sections of Russell Road are, 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 are not something we're looking at as part of this project right now, but uh, something that could be looked at in the future. I don't know if uh, Kevin Carey had anything more to add there, but we yeah we, we we're gonna we kind of describe that section between Lewis's Kenosha as we're we're upgrading that section and I would kind of just be able to provide those four foot paved bike friendly shoulders and then also a four foot aggregate shoulder that that's quite a difference than what's out there today and I think that help, does help make the road safer but we'd have to be looking at you know anything outside of our project limits here would have to come in as part of another project yeah and we've been going through. Uh, recently and adding those four foot paved shoulders or really it's converting our existing aggregate shoulders to a little bit more asphalt. So it's not necessarily a widening. Um, it's just kind of uh, converting that aggregate to asphalt to provide a four foot, uh, what we call bike friendly shoulders. So we've been doing that with our resurfacing jobs. I'd have to go back and look and we can certainly follow up uh, after this, this meeting. I can look at our program. I know we had either have had or have, have planned to uh, resurface other segments of Russell Road um, around the same time too. So whenever we come through with the resurfacing job, we would look to do that. So let me, uh, we can we can look through the limits here after the meeting and then certainly reach back out to uh, and, 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 and add this on our website or reach back out to the individuals that are asking the questions and, and uh, confirm what those limits are. So, but anytime we do do a resurfacing job, we'll come back and, and look to convert those shoulders to provide a four foot wider shoulder. Okay, uh, one or a couple more questions here. Uh, is there anything that can be done on a temporary basis at the Kilbourne intersection to help with the truck traffic? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I, th I think on a temporary, and I think when someone's saying help with the truck traffic, I assume we're talking about uh, getting either not having the truck traffic there or making them operate through the intersection safer. Um, right. And I'm, I'm, I'm trying, I'm pausing here a little bit to think, what are the answers to those things? Um, I think the, um, you know, the truck usage in the corridor, you know, we're, we're aware that it's, it's, it's something that is changing and is growing, but there, there are some limited resources that we have or the county has to prevent trucks from going through these routes. So uh, I, I guess I would add that it's, it's something that Lake County is aware of, 
it's great to hear this feedback from, from many of you today through the Q&A button to, to get a flavor for the seriousness of, of what's happening today. And uh, I guess I'll speak for Kevin and, and Lake County DOT that it's something that, that we're going to continue to analyze and continue to review uh, over the next period uh, while we're working through this project to see what else could be done. Thanks, Matt. There was a question regarding the um, funding for the, the project, um, just the projects being funded by Lake County. Correct. Yeah, so yeah, I can add a little bit to that. So yeah, the project is, is currently planned to be funded by Lake County. Uh, we are coordinating and working with both Kenosha County and Pleasant Prairie. Uh, since the Kenosha and Lewis intersections uh, involved, the north legs of each of those involved those two agencies. So uh, we have met with them multiple times. Uh, we've had some great uh, discussions and meetings trying to kind of lay out how this is all going to work as we enter into the design phase and ultimately into construction. So uh, definitely things that both of those Wisconsin-based agencies are aware of, and we're going to continue to be coordinating with them. Uh, one thing that uh, some feedback we received from Kenosha County was a desire to make sure that we did another uh, outreach event, either like this or something in person prior to construction in 2024. So um, that's something that between the agencies we've, we've committed to that there would be another outreach event to uh, let people know when, um, you know, before construction starts and what the detour routes are and those kind of things to make sure that people are aware. I'm going to jump into Jen. I saw a question a second ago, you know, in response to the four foot bike friendly shoulders, uh, saying that that isn't enough for, um, for the bicyc bicyclists out there. And I think Matt mentioned it earlier, maybe with, um, you know, the planned bike path along Russell road. Um, you know, these are intersection improvements, um, with specific purposes that we're, <clears throat> excuse me, looking to accommodate, but, um, we do have a planned bike path shown on our 2040 non-motorized plan. It's not in our program now, and it's not intended to be scoped as part of this project. So we've designed these, you know, the roundabouts in particular to accommodate that future path. Um, so there is a plan out there. It's, it's more of a long-term plan at this point uh, that'll provide an off-road off, uh, off facility, more of a standard bike path along Russell Road in the future. So I know that doesn't uh, you know, address the, your need or, or desire to have it done here sooner, but so bike-friendly shoulders is kind of what we do with our resurfacing jobs. We do have a future planned uh, uh, you know, a planned up to put a path along Russell Road from Sheridan Road all the way down to I think around 94, or maybe even over to the uh, to the Forest Preserve west of there. So, just wanted to chime in with that one too. Yeah, and one more here. I just want to chime in too. Uh, I know Matt's talked about the trucks. Um, yeah, there's been a lot of questions and comments about the trucks. So. We heard at the first meeting, you know, the concerns that we saw in our traffic counts with the truck traffic and stuff along the route. Um, we've done a lot of research and talking to some of the experts and, and um, you know, law enforcement out there and digging through the state statutes and we aren't finding anything now. Um, you know, it looks like they're they're doing everything for the most part that's legal. I mean, our it's not, uh, you know, not not probably the preferred uh, per response at this time, but, but you know, they are making legal maneuvers out there um, and the county highways are designed for this regional type of traffic and all users as Matt mentioned earlier. So in addition to, to the vehicles and, and, and uh, you know, cyclists, pedestrians, it's also for moving goods and services and, and trucks. So we know that there's a lot going up to Pleasant Prairie. Um, there's, uh, you know, comments and a lot of people believe that they're bypassing maybe some of the the, uh, the wait stations and stuff too, but they're also getting to locations, you know, they're continuing some of them down Russell Road to get to other locations in Lake County, um, along Trumpet Park, and then over even to, um, down to the lakefront and stuff in Winter Harbor, um, down there for the marina and everything too. So definitely a concern, as Matt said, we'll continue to look into it. We're still working behind the scenes. Um, you know, these these projects are, are one thing, but we're working behind the scenes with uh, those ex experts and the law enforcement and stuff. Um, enforcement may help. Uh, we're gonna work with the sheriff's office to look into that um, for oversized, overweight, you know, trucks that are making illegal, illegal maneuvers. But um, so it is something that we're hearing from everybody and something that we'll continue to look at and work work on behind the scenes um, and see what what if, if there's anything or what can be done. 
appreciate that, Kevin. Yeah, I think that uh, there's definitely a, a concern about there, out there about it, and I always wish, wish uh, that there was an easy, easy solution. So, um, okay. Well, I think we are. We have up with most of the questions um, here. Uh, Alyssa, if you could go to the next slide. And so just, uh, I guess, a few reminders here. Um, so the comment period will remain open after tonight uh, to provide any input on the preferred alternatives that were presented. And that will remain open until November 4th. Um, all comments can be sent directly to Russell Road team at transystems.com, the email address on your screen. And then if you're unable to uh, access that email address, blank comment forms and hard copies of the presentation can be picked up from the four locations noted here. Uh, for those on the phone, the locations are the Winthrop Harbor Village Hall, uh, Lake County Division of Transportation, Pleasant Prairie Village Hall, and the Kenosha County Center. And then all meeting materials uh, and a recording of this presentation will be available uh, within a, uh, starting early next week on the project website listed there, which is www.lakecounty.il.gov backslash Russell Road. So again, thank you everybody for your feedback and for coming and have a great evening.